So we have our espresso machine and it spits out what? It spits out something that it said was this, but turns out to be that. Not that we don't make mistakes, mind you, it's a big bureaucracy, but it, it has me a tad worried about the visioning because people often leap over that really boring backroom part, and I'm speaking, I'm a head of reference at a couple of libraries. I'm not the cataloger or the person who's going to lose the job here. It, but it is so fundamental to my work with my <coughs> scholars and my students to be able to say, when it says this, it's this. It's not something else. So that's the big question. The tiny one, the comment one is, so what do you think about the notebooks in the room and Sweto Library at the University of Chicago, which they had to build because their faculty and their students in vast numbers said, no, 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 you cannot take these books off our campus. They have to be. Yeah. And that's an arts and science. Yeah. Um, so you're right. The second one is uh, you know, sort of internal politics. It's you know, how do you think about the what should be in a space. Um, Christian Academy, as you well know, had a similar kind of experience. I think it just sort of getting rid of books broadly is just feels anti-intellectual somehow to me. It doesn't seem like it's sort of missing the point, right? The, the point here is we need to create a learning environment going forward that's good. People right now are learning with different things. We've got to figure out how to have that variation within this. It's a hybrid moment. It's a hybrid moment. It's neither analog nor digital. It's digital plus in my view. Um, so to your harder question. I take it in a way to be what's the future of technical services or what's the future of cataloging or um, could we get along without cataloging, which may be the way in which the budget cutter sort of asks the question. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, so well, point one is um, my view is that catalogers and people in technical services need to get better at being advocates for what they do. I think that catalogers have had a very hard time making the case for um, levels of metadata creation and use. Um, Frankly, in my own library, when I have um, adjusted standards, let's put it that way, which is to say brought them down, um, and I'll describe why if you want, um, the people who have fought back most aggressively are the reference librarians, exactly as you suggested. So the people who fight back against me when I say we don't need the gold plus, 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 plus version because we can't afford it, version of cataloging, the reference people say absolutely we do, and here's why. And actually, often they have very good reasons, right? Um, so I don't think you're invoking this as a head of reference is unusual at all. I think it's just right. You're the ones who actually are making the better case for the need for metadata. Okay, so the reality is that this is plainly an area that lots of people are cutting. Um, I'm quite confident that um, as any review happens across a big university system, people will say, can we do with less cataloging? Why? The things that are visible to the patrons are the people out at ref desks and the people at circ desks and whatever, and the people who have the direct relationships with the powerful people, like the faculty who become provosts and faculty who become deans, tend to be the reference people, right? So there is a built-in issue there, and it's, there's a huge pressure on it. Um, okay, so uh, what will happen? With less metadata, you're quite right that there will be less good search and discovery mechanisms, right? There, there will be some diminution of that, I think. Um, but I don't think it's all badness. So here's one reason. I think if we think quite differently about how the cloud functions as it develops, that there may be a way for us to be more collaborative than we've been in the past. Now, does anybody here work for OCLC? I'm about to say something bad about OCLC? <laughs> okay. So the idea that our structure has been to share materials with a well-meaning institution and a great institution initially, um, but in a way that disallows us to um, share it truly, to have it in an open cloud-based way, to me is preposterous at this moment. So I actually think that if we are able to have the idea of the library cloud that I mentioned before, where we in fact share metadata much more openly, I think the next big movement is not just open access to the scholarship, but open access to the metadata, right? And we actually get scholars and other people in on the act of working with catalogers and, and you know amending it and adding to it and so forth. I think that movement will help solve this problem. I don't think it completely solves the problem. It doesn't get rid of the need to do good cataloging. It just means we can do it more efficiently than we have. I may be wrong. It seems like part of it is also that you have to be taught or individuals have to understand why, why, why that difference matters. Mm -hmm. Why does it matter to have this version and not that version? Um, and to be able to, you know, use your mind to recognize that, oh, I'm, deal I'm not dealing with what I thought I, you know, I don't have here what I thought, what I was expecting. So there's this kind of basic pedagogical my question, which is, and you opened up, and I thought it was very interesting about talking about the socio-economic skew in yeah. terms of digital, digital literacy. And um, what I'm wondering is, is there a way that you know of that university, at the university levels, there's a way, you know, like, you know, I'm thinking back, you know, when I went into school, I would need to sign up for French. Well, do you take a French test to see, you know, how good are you? Do you yes. take French 101, or can you go into the second year already? Is there a kind of equivalent? Are there evaluated tools? 
about where their students are at so they can pitch the teaching to the right level. Because if you require every yeah. student to take, let's say, a, liter a library information science class, I think yeah. it's a great idea. But the students who are more sophisticated are going to be bored, and the students who are less sophisticated are going to be lost, and you're kind of losing on both, you're losing them on both ends. Yeah. And so is there a way to kind of filter, filter that? Or? I've actually never heard it asked quite in that way, so I want to think more about it, but it's a wonderful concept, and I love the link between the learning that's happening and back to cataloging. Mm -hmm. completely agree that if you can build that link, that's the fundamental piece, right? If, in fact, we're undermining our ability to serve the teaching and learning mission of the university, we're kaput, right? So anything that breaks that link is crucial to um, understand. Now, catalogers have to be careful not to overstate the link, and we have to figure out really what's necessary, but I think it's a really, really important insight. In terms of the um, teaching programs and the literacy, I've never seen a university do it. It doesn't mean it hasn't been done. We certainly don't do it. Um, but one possible answer to it, to think about the fact that you don't want a one-size-fits-all version of this, very importantly, the skew is very, very broad, um, is to think about the ability that we're um, starting to develop across different learning platforms where you can have, take an iPad app or a um, an online system that is very quickly diagnostic and then allows you to um, uh, make harder questions for um, kids who need harder questions and less hard questions for kids who um, need more basic questions. This is a really simple idea that is bubbling up through the K-12 to system, right? Because we have this huge problem of do you do tracking, do you do differentiation, how do you kind of meet the needs in a big, huge public school environment? I don't see why that same principle doesn't apply to your problem, right? Why isn't it an iPad app or it's a even the iPad app could be diagnostic, even if you, the iPad app were not then the thing that scaffolded out. But I actually think the scaffolding is exactly what we should do, so that you um, have to pass through this in order to get you know, to the other side of it. And if you are really advanced, great, you're going to get some really cool advanced stuff, and of course you'll pass, but you actually might get stretched. And if you're really in a tough spot, um, you know, it'll bring you a little bit along, and maybe it'll flag it for you know, a librarian or someone else who could help. I think it's a wonderful idea. I haven't heard it before. Yes, sir. Oh, wonderful. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> You're an important person in any event, in my view. Uh, the, uh, I have seen the library become more social space uh, than in looking at the students using their computers, they're, they're doing social things. They're not looking at my uh, journals. They're not looking at articles that I can see. Uh, yes, they do, but I mean, the, the, the whole concept of the library is a social space. Do you see it undermining the presence of the library as a center for research and therefore making the administration think that this is space rather than supporting the elements for acquisitions, uh, information literacy, or having librarians <coughs> go out and cluster with a teaching faculty? Is this social? impinging on the research? I don't happen to think it is. Um, so th this is something absolutely debatable. This is complete just personal opinion. I actually think anything that gets students into a library space and has them, you know, even if it's because they're going to be next to one another, I think that's probably always been true to some extent, that it's a social experience of sitting next to somebody studying. The fact that, of course, I see them on Facebook and so forth as I go by, as well as reading journals, um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. If this is a vibrant environment in which people want to come and they want to be there, and yes, some of the time they're studying and some of the times they're slacking off. Now, there's a separate problem, which is students need to multitask or switch tasks less than they do. Right, so we need to help students understand that they will get through their homework, and frankly, faculty will write their books faster if they're not multitasking while they're doing it or switch tasking, which is the real thing. Um, so uh, that's a really fundamental learning issue. Um, but to your bigger question, no, bring them in. Uh, to me, it's great. I agree that we want to bring them in. Yeah. It's been very powerful. I can't believe the transition. And we don't have a, a, a table that stays in place more than three minutes, yep. and, and they brought it together. Yep. But yep. my point is, if if they look at the library purely as social, and and think the librarian in that environment isn't out working or assisting the research faculty or teaching the students how to do research, then the library has lost its value in the academic environment. If that's encouraged, so. Be encouraged too. Um, so I, I, I don't think it's 
the fact that the teachers shouldn't be embedded with librarians and vice versa out in the community, but I don't know, I guess I don't see them as mutually exclusive, but I, I think it's, it seems to me a very important political question to ask, among other things. Yeah. The, the idea of the library being used for social purposes is probably slightly misconstrued. You have to realize that today, as in the sciences, learning is collaborative. And I am an observer of student use of libraries as well as a researcher. And these kids are plugged in with their computers. There are four of them together, four computers open, and they are attacking a given study problem together because they, each kid brings a different insight. And I was, or I was quite impressed. This is one day last week at the URI library. Um, the other, and, and it's important to keep that in it's crucial. The, I mean, that's critical yeah. because people who are in the sciences know they don't work alone. They're working, their work is global. The people they're collaborating with can be any place, China or Switzerland. The other important point it concerns the skills required for the new library format. And you've seen the redesign both here at URI and Brown, which is a library I use quite frequently. And I discovered that the new skill required of librarians is, and he's my key man, uh, is an engineering student who specialize in warehouse operations. Mm -hmm. Because these books are warehouse. Now, Dewey and LC are still very important because that's the basis of the, yeah. of the, of the barcode, but there's another thing in there. You've got a, a warehouse environmentally controlled. Right, and we do it by uh, size. 30 feet, the stack is 30 yeah. feet high, yeah. so the librarian hasn't devolved to that state. <laughs> This is our is tired, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Could you talk about more collaborative use of information ecosystems on campus and what would possibly be the reality of maybe using RFIDs with the books that are in the library? Yeah, so I, I, um, I'm teaching a class on library design um, with a, a design school professor at the GSD, and a student yesterday presented a proposal for RFIDs. And her idea was that you stick an RFID chip in every book. I thought and, well, you can, of course, do it. And the, then you had a, a little um, device with the reader on it. And if you're walking around and you're trying to find where the book was, and they walk into a cafe, you can kind of track them. Oh, there's my book. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone's backpack. You can imagine just like opening up the backpack. And there's my book, right? Um, so uh, there are lots of visions of this. I think that's a little scary for privacy reasons. Yeah. <laughs> also stalking and other reasons. Um, but I actually think it's along the right track, um, which is for exactly the, the, your first point, which is we are teaching affirmatively people to work in teams. It's a good idea, right? And it is plainly, we do it across disciplines now, we design classes in this way. I think libraries can track to that, right? Can be supporting that in explicit ways. I, I know I've gotten the hook here from Gail um, a minute ago, but I, I just think that's a wonderful provocation to put on the table for these four things, was how do libraries support that kind of interdisciplinary work in kind of a social mode across these different school boundaries. I think it's a it's a great problem to work on. Anyway, thank you so much for the chance to be here. I'm really sorry to cut this short, but I know that Dr. Palfrey um, took time out from an